Hey everybody, welcome back to Bleeding Cool's recap of the seventh season of American Horror Story uh, Cult. Uh, we're going to be going over the second episode uh, of the season, uh, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Uh, I'm a little punchy, a little loopy, uh, just to give you a fair warning, so if I go off on tangents, you, you've been warned, uh, but that might actually be the best way to kind of approach this. So I have my handy dandy list here, we're going to run through recap, we're going to tell you a couple things that I think about why the title Don't Be Afraid of the Dark is so appropriate, um, give you my 10 set evaluation. Uh, and you guys, again, always let me know what you think. Um, you can hit me up with my contact information below. But more importantly, share this, comment, uh, and let me know what your thoughts are. If you think I'm great, that's awesome. If you think I'm full of it, well, let me know that too. That kind of hurts my feelings. But hey, anyhow, comments are always important. So here we go. Um, we start off immediately from where the last episode left off. Uh, we see Ali uh, in bed with the three-faced clown. She goes running and screaming. Uh, Ivy comes upstairs to with a knife. And lo and behold, uh, the three-faced clown is gone. Now, the three-faced clown there, uh, three-faced clown could have had time to escape. Um, so there are those possibilities. Uh, my paranoia is very high, uh, and I have a, a, an adjustment to my two-cult theory that I was talking about before, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, we have a point where I Ivy's just kind of had enough. Um, she says, I don't know how much more of this I can, I, I can take. Uh, and Allie responds with, I, I think there might be something wrong with me. I don't know what's real anymore, um, and I, neither do we, um, because again, we see, especially with regards to the three-phase clown, if she's hallucinating, whatever that is, uh, it's something that's being shared uh, with Oz, so there, there's some kind of connection there. Uh, we see a segment with Oz and Twisty, um, dream of being stalked by Twisty, and also, again, as we mentioned before, ta-da, the three-phase clown. Uh, what I think is interesting is that Oz goes to Ivy for, um, to be consoled, not Allie. Uh, so it would be very interesting to see where that dynamic is going to play out, uh, especially when winter comes into play later on also. Okay, I talked about this before, but I want to talk about the two-cult theory. My original two-cult theory somehow was that there was Evan Peters Kai's group, and then there was going to be this clown cult, and maybe not necessarily they're the same, but I'm thinking the clown cult might be the final cult and what Kai's doing is kind of bringing, I guess for lack of a better phrase, um, either converts or victims to the group. I only say this because, spoiler if you haven't seen it yet, there's a scene where Chad Bono's character looks like like he's getting tortured by the clowns. Uh, so uh, again, it kind of got me wondering a little bit, maybe I'm reading too much into it, maybe I totally have to go back and see that scene, but I thought that was interesting. So again, that's my variation on my two, two cult theory. Um... We get, uh, we get to see that, again, Kai, to no surprise, is going to take advantage of the viral video of him getting beaten up last week, and he's going to try and make a run for power, specifically, to make a run for the council seat. The council seat that's vacant because the councilman and his wife were killed, the same council person who attacked Kai verbally when Kai showed up to the town council meeting. So, again, uh, uh, yeah, lots lots of coincidences I'm, we're left to assume, I'm guessing. Um... At this point, Allie goes back across the street because she wants to see what's going on now that it's clean up and everything else, and you see new neighbors are moving in. And it's very, very soon when you consider that there was either either a major clown cult homicide that took place there or a murder-suicide. I'm still leaning towards the clown cult. Um, while Ivy has gone back to the restaurant, and Ivy's already starting to see some of the divisions that are going on uh, because of the, the immigration issues that are in play, uh, and because of the racist issues that are in play, too. Uh, Pedro, who works in the kitchen, is starting to go at it with Roger, who I think is the main point person in the kitchen. And you're starting to see those tensions build, and, and Ivy's seeing it, too. Um, what she's interpreting from that may be left to a question mark that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, Winter and Oz. There was a very great quote took out of that. Um, the trick is figuring out what they want to believe and giving it to them. And I'm wondering if Winter isn't doing that to Kai. You know, is you know, we, we see Kai as quote unquote the big bad, but I'm wondering exactly how much of a player Winter is gonna be in all of this. Uh Pinky to Pinky, flesh to flesh, you're going to give me your fear, Oz, she says to the boy. And again, I don't know if necessarily she has it in bad for him. For for a woman who doesn't like children the way she put that out there, I don't know if necessarily she has uh bad things intended for Oz or may still want to have bad things intended as this goes along and she gets to know the boy more. Um, she takes Oz across the street to get to meet the new neighbors, and that's when we get to meet 
uh, Harrison and Meadow, um, who I'm going to be calling uh, Wilt, uh, Hilton from now on. That's what I did in live blog. In case you were wondering, in case you thought that I misspelled it, no, it just started to become a pain in the butt spelling out the whole name. So I'm going with Hilton. Hilton is Billy Eigner's character. We see Hilton is a really big fan of bees. Um, more specifically, fan of the whole bee colony all working towards one concept. It's like a 10-ton hint uh, about cult life. Um, and I don't know if it's just meant to be that way so we can see it so obvious, if it's meant as a swerve. Uh, I don't know, but it was really, really out there. Also, it really seemed like they were both really trying to sell the murder-suicide angle as a as to what happened to the councilman and his wife. Um, really, really, really hard trying to sell that. But I can imagine on a side note, that the real estate must have been very, very cheap uh, to get a house after something like that. That's come up with no questions asked. Um, we also find out that um, Hilton and Meadow are a marriage of agreement. Um, that Hilton is actually gay, um, but they were. Uh, they say they are friends and have chosen to, to, to be married if neither of them had a significant other or children at that point. Uh, so they got married. Um, that's the backstory. Uh, again, it kind of also can lend itself to the cult concept, too. So, again, everybody is a question mark in this thing. Um, Ivy, Oz, and Ali, the uh, restaurant alarm goes off. Um, it's interesting because we see that Ivy's ready to go, but Ali, showing a, a good faith effort to Ivy to show that she can take care of things, offers to go to the restaurant herself. Um, Ali goes to the restaurant, shuts the alarm off, gets distracted and senses something in the meat locker, and finds Roger, the guy who was arguing with Pedro, the other worker in the kitchen earlier, um, hanging on a meat hook dead, or so we think. Um, because it turns out it's not a hallucination. And when we go back from commercial, uh, we see that Ivy has uh, uh, coincidentally run into Dr. Vincent, who she's invited, who she has invited Dr. Vincent over the house to talk to Allie. Um, Dr. Vincent, for those of you who don't know, being uh, Allie's therapist from the uh, previous episode. Uh, and they have a conversation, and we find out that Roger wasn't actually dead on the hook. He had died on the hook, and Allie blames herself for having killed Roger. But my guess is, if you're hanging on a meat hook, barring any, uh, barring missing every major thing, it's been a while. It, it, yeah, I, it, I agree with Dr. Vincent. She really, really shouldn't be blaming herself. Um, it looks like everybody is wanting to put it on to Pedro. I think based on the earlier conversation and also because of the buzz that is going on around the area, uh, I, I think Kai's video is not exactly helping the situation in that regard. Um, we see uh, we see that uh, Hilton and Meadow are gun people again, and we, we also see that Allie has decided to get herself a gun. Um, Dr. Vincent does not think this is a good idea, understandably so, because we have somebody who's a little strung out, who's seeing hallucinations, who isn't taking her medication. And now she has a gun, and worst of all, she plays the doctor-client privilege, so he can't tell Ivy. Um, so Ali has this gun. He has to basically respect her decision and not say anything because he doesn't see enough yet to be able to see her as a definitive threat or, or to make that decision. Or I think to make that decision and run the risk of ruining the, the, the doctor-patient bond that he has with her. Um, it gets very, very concerning at one point when, when Ivy says to her, you know, I'm worried about you, and she answers, you should be. You know, and this doesn't help that it's followed up by the confrontation between Kai and Ali at the door. Um, after the, we see that the steel bars are up after what had happened at the restaurant uh, for Ali to feel more safe. Um, and Kai says to her, it's so easy until it's you they're coming for. Um, and again, we're, we're left to wonder what exactly the full connection is between them, why he is so specifically zeroed in, in on Ali and that family. Um, how much that tie-in comes into play, but there just seems to be a combination of this, this seething loathing from Kai to Allie, but also it seems like this need to try to force her to confront her fears. So again, I think that builds into the whole, you know, are they breaking her down to convert her to bring her on? Um, and what what will Allie be like if they break her down? That's, that's, I think, the most concerning. I think that's one of the biggest concerns everybody should have. We see Winter puts Oz to sleep. Um, and then she uh, convinces Allie to treat herself to a nice glass of wine uh, and a warm bath. And we see uh, Winter starting to seduce Allie when the alarms go off. Um, alarms go off, lights go out. Hilton's talking about how, and I'm going to get this right, eight states just went dark all at the same time. 
He's saying it's a terrorist attack. Um, what I think is interesting is, is it true? You know, you know, is it was this just something locally set? Is is Ali in such a mindset that she's just going to naturally believe it um, and not do the backing on it? I'm very curious. I, I'd like to see some semblance of a news report or something that isn't just local. Uh, if it's that wide of a of a blackout, could be. I don't know. Again, maybe I'm just being paranoid. Um, winter leaves. Um, which again, I thought was very interesting to do to, in a place like that. I mean, I understand the argument of wanting to get your loved ones and see if they're safe. It just seemed like, again, a convenient setup for something, which we're about to see. Um, Ali calls Ivy at the restaurant. Um, she, she Ali's a mess. Uh, Ali wants Ivy to get back there. Uh, Ivy's telling her, look, I'll get back there as soon as I possibly can. But the restaurant, um, I, you know, there's a power outage. There are people there. You got to watch for the food and everything else and make sure the restaurant shuts down properly. So she sent Pedro over with some items to kind of tide them over. Um, again, my paranoia, I can't help but feel like Pedro is being set up for something. It just, with everything that's gone on, I feel like something wasn't going to go right by way of Pedro. And, well, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Um, Ali sees the ice cream truck across the street. Um, she's making sure now all the doors are barricaded so that they don't have access. Um Big question mark. She does a lot for any kind of semblance of wanting to check on Oz. Um, so that was, I thought, mm, you know, maybe get the kid. Kid could come along. Uh, it, yeah, it, it took a lot. If you're that concerned, leaving your kid undetended where somebody could have gotten in from any other part of the house. Yeah, I'm not sure that was a great move. Um, Allie finds the uh, wires cut in the electrical box, which, again, very interesting find. I'd be very curious to see if that was actually a hallucination or if it's real but uh, kind of throws a damper on the whole terrorist attack, all the powers out in all of these areas. Um, she ends up barreling past a clown, possibly, maybe, if the clown exists. Um, she ends up barreling past the clown to go up the stairs to get to Oz. Um, she gets Oz, they're going downstairs, and uh, their plan is they're gonna make, they're gonna open the door and they're gonna hightail it across the street to the neighbors. Um, so she's got odds, they're ready to go, she throws open the door, clown appears, she pulls out her gun and shoots. Lo and behold, big, non-shocking non spoiler, it wasn't the clown, it was Pedro. Um, and she killed Pedro, who was there to bring her stuff. And who I were supposed to, I guess, believe, if not believe at this point, was there being set up in any way. Can't help it, it just feels that way. Um, but what I'm curious about is to see what this does to Allie and, and her belief system. And the reason why I say belief system is because we're at a point right now where she's being tested. You know, all of her beliefs are being tested and she's looking for something that's just going to work for her. I'm curious to see if she's willing to own up to this or if she's going to try and, and change or alter the story to keep herself out of jail and put the onus on Pedro. Because if that happens, you know, that's just her playing up fear uh, to basically save herself. And it's not really much different than what Kai's doing. Um, so again, the darkness we see um, the idea of not being afraid of the dark, we see, mm -hmm, it's kind of ironic in the sense that there's a lot to be afraid of, especially the things that you don't know about and the things that Allie doesn't know about, uh, and the things we don't know about going into episode three, which was my, uh, $5 segue into, uh, promoting tonight's, uh, live blog. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be, uh, live blogging episode three, um, Neighbors from Hell. Uh, we're going to be starting, we start this up for a little pre-gaming at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just to send out some interesting stuff. But we get the ball rolling at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please join us. I uh, hope to see you guys then. I uh, hope you enjoyed the recap, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.